This video is sponsored by Gamers Grass. It's, it's Tabletop, Tabletop Time. Time. I'm Murray. I'm Dave. And I'm Jen. And on today's episode of Tabletop Time, we are making an adorable Pokemon Christmas village. Woo! Yeah. Yay. <laughs> what is your job, Murray? I'm going to make the front of the house. What is your job, Dave? I'm going to watch. <laughs> and I'm going to sing Christmas songs until I drive everyone crazy. Let's go. I, I see a flaw with this. Who's doing the Pokemon? <laughs> no one. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Oh, sorry. Uh. It sure is. And I found the perfect 3D models for our diorama. These are incredibly cute. Oh my gosh. This is Printed Obsession, a modeler who creates like cute Pokemon. Yes. And they've added Christmas hats to uh, a few of them. These are also free to download. So thank you very much for supplying these so we could make the best Pokemon display possible. I'm the cat man. Oh wait, Jim was the one that was supposed to be singing your episode. I thought I'd make some cool stuff in Blender. Basically, I wanted to make a present. And after that was done, I grabbed Charmander. And I, as a beginner to Blender, had no idea how to repose this thing without completely ruining it. So I learned how to rig a skeleton in like 10 minutes and then did that. Using the skeleton, I could rotate around his wrists and arms. So now we have an adorable Charmander holding our gift. It's time for you two to get going with the diorama. So we're gonna go check on my 3D prints. Some of them may have succeeded, but I have a feeling some of them haven't. Definitely looks like we've lost the Christmas tree, unfortunately, but it looks like everyone else may be printed okay. Yes, yeah, so I'll take these off the print bed, uh, clean them up, cure them, wash them, do all that stuff, and we'll see what we're left with. All right, so a little house. Yeah. Covered in snow. Okay. Lovely, warm, inviting fire light coming out sure. of windows. And maybe cool. some like pine trees, like very piney, sort of thick, thick snow. Squirtle wants to come inside because mm -hmm. Christmas is all about sharing. Yeah, and of course. That, that loving moment of friends and family. Of course. The little Pokemon holding a present. Ah, oh, super cute. I think it's about time to get started. Awesome. All right, let's do that. Murray, what's something you really want for Christmas? Oh boy, I really want some gamers grass like we have arrayed on the table in front of us. Oh, look at that. There you go. Have some have some winter extra large tufts. Cheers. Enjoy. Dave, what would you like for Christmas? Hmm. I really want some wonderful bases to glue my Gamers Grass stuff I already own because I love Gamers Grass and I have their entire product range. Oh, well I've got some lovely resin bases here for you. There you go, enjoy. Thank you. And you guys can also give the ones you love an awesome present this year for Christmas. Why not choose Gamers Grass? No you can't. It's not going to arrive in time. You failed them. Don't fail them next year. So as you probably guessed, one of the really cool things that Gamers Grass do is their grass tufts. They come in all shapes, sizes, colors, you name it, and there is a tuft for you. Woo! The range of flowers are also stunningly beautiful and can be used in any type of scenery. And if you want something to put those tufts on, they have a wide range of resin bases that are unpainted, but if you're in a hurry and you want something that looks amazing, they have a range of pre-painted, pre-weathered, and pre-tufted bases. Now their tufts are amazing, Mari. They're probably one of my my favorite things. I can tell. But what's even better, what's even better, it's the laser cut plants because nothing is as good as laser cut plants from Gamers Grass. I love their new range, like these black magic tarot, which is super suitable for alien worlds, death worlds, maybe doing like a Katachan jungle. Ah, the possibilities. Yeah. Links are in the description. Make sure you click on them because they're awesome and they're very affordable. We haven't mentioned yeah. how affordable they are. True. Mm. How affordable they are. And for today's oh, project. Affordable. So grab them now for those that you love. That's right, your miniatures. <laughs> so we actually ended up doing two prints of these. The first ones weren't super good because they weren't supported very well. Uh, it was my first time actually printing something from start to finish. So I did a second print and everything came out pretty much perfectly. Bulbasaur was missing his leg and there were a few other bits and pieces that needed to be added on, but I wasn't afraid of using some green stuff and fixing this right up. But Jen, you didn't mention how adorable these little pom-poms you made were. Yeah, so one or two of these weren't, again, supported correctly, my bad, but in the end, I just used some green stuff and fixed these right up. Nice, I love it. So it's time to start moving on to our diorama. Yeah, so I was in charge of making the little sort of the footprint of the whole thing, and I decided that since Charmander would be on the side of the street, I'd make a little addition, a little lip at the end, which would be like the street. So he'd be on the footpath at the very end of it, and then we could see into the front yard of the house he'd be able to enter. This is also probably one of the smallest dioramas we've made in quite a while. Usually our projects are quite big, but we decided to go a bit smaller on this scale. Yeah, this is, this is a lot more calm. All right, so this is just going to be some plastic 
plastic card that I make the pavement out of. I'm just gonna cut it into tiles and then gently bevel it just to make them separate a little bit. Oh, that plastic card snap looked very satisfying. Yeah, it's always good. Now I noticed these are much larger than our little Pokemon model. What's the thought behind that? So I want this to be a human scale city or town. So I want the Pokemon to look very, very cute and sort of like Alice in Wonderland-ish. I think that was an awesome idea. I love the really cute scale of the Pokemon compared to the obviously human environment around them. And it's true to Pokedex entries. Pikachu is only 40 centimeters tall. So Murray had done a great job setting up the base and I wanted to do one more thing. I recently did a video on the channel checking out the Snapmaker 3 in 1. And while Murray and Jen were working on this project, I used that as an excuse to basically make up a little cabin front and test out the CNC capabilities of the machine. If you're interested in seeing that in more detail, check out our video. Links are in the cards just here. Who let the dogs out? Roof. Roof, roof, roof. <sighs> So we want a little roof to go with the front of the house that Dave has taken over. I said I'd be doing the front of the house, but I'm gonna do what I can to add to it. So a little roof it is, and we're gonna go with some shingles. So I've just made a little base and I'm gonna add in bits of balsa wood and gouge out some ceiling edging on it. Some ceiling edging, also known as tiles. Okay, it is check-in time. We've left this overnight to dry and set and we've come back to this, but we've also come back to this. Now this is something that Dave has machined up for us in a, uh, in a very cool way with a CNC machine. So we're gonna have our house, we're gonna cut out the windows, probably the door, we want some light coming through. Mm -hmm. We'll have our little Pokemon welcoming our Charmander into the lovely house. So then the other stuff we need to do is paint this up, add a lot of grass and texture to it, and then paint the Pokemon as well, so that's the first thing I will be doing this morning. Hell yeah. <laughs> so while I was finishing up building some things, Jen, you got the awesome task of actually painting the Pokemon. Yes, and they look so cute. These guys printed absolutely beautifully. So I just went in with the Vallejo primer that we always use and it chucked it through the airbrush. Now, one thing we discussed on very early is that we wanted that sort of lovely ethereal blue bounce of light from the snow to sort of reflect on everything. So we wanted to start off with that sort of blue color. What did you do here? Yeah, so I basically ran a purple and bluey sort of custom mix of colors through the airbrush and lit this from underneath to create those shadows that we wanted. Now, you are making an incredible rainbow. Yeah, just laying down that initial burst of color and I'll come back in later and hand paint it up to a brighter, more opaque color. Okay, so clearly you have made the proper start to a festive painting and you just started with the Christmas hat. Yeah, absolutely. They were looking a little bit dark, so I definitely needed to come in and brighten them up. So I wanted to get a bit festive and start off with the hats, working my way down to, well, their feeties, I suppose. <laughs> Very nice. Now, one thing I've loved seeing develop in our time at Tabletop Time is your really nice, sketchy, painterly style of painting, Jen. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I think I've grown really accustomed to it. Yeah, it lends a really unique air, and I think it will really look good on the sort of cartoony Pokemon. So at this point in time, the Pokemon were pretty much done, but they were looking a little bit dead. Uh, so I needed to put some irises into their eyeballs. And as soon as I did this, I felt like they absolutely came alive. You've done some really nice OSL on this flame tail here, which I think will make a really nice focal point in our diorama. So I have the front of our house that Dave had printed for us, and I'm just going to go around, trim it up and cut out the doors and windows. And then I even received a little visit from the man himself who proceeded to stay and directly in the frame. Yes, it's always fun to see the strange and obscure places that Murray hides cameras around the studio. All right, guys, it's me, it's your boy, Dave. How you doing, everyone? I remember you. It's me, and guess what? What? I have free time, so I've got some time to work on your project. What would you like some help with? We need you to spray the diorama. Yes. Mm. What Great color would you like it sprayed? Bluey purple. I don't know why, but I'm gonna do it. Oh. Paint the thing purple. All right, I'm on a mission. I don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm gonna use this cool airbrush from Nerdy Crafters Not Another Crap Kit and, uh, and basically just spray it uh, purple all over. 
Jen, you finished painting the tree and you're going to cover it in something. What are you doing? Yeah, so this tree was looking a little bit too animated for my style and I thought maybe putting on some gamer's grass tufts could really make it come alive and this actually worked exceptionally well. I'm really happy with the results of me just putting these little tufts wherever I thought was necessary, leaving the longer ones to the bottom and the shorter ones to the top. Once I was happy with how my tree was looking and he was nice and bushy beard, it was time to add on some of these little gems I found to represent baubles on the Christmas tree. Nice, they're a really good scale for that. That's a really good find. Yeah, I was pretty impressed with this. Though I knew at the end this would probably be covered in snow, but I wanted to add that little bit of Christmas charm. Now, if only we had some nice tinsel or something that we could use. Oh, but Amy came in handy with that one. She suggested using some metallic pipe cleaners and wrapping it around the tree. And I think, again, this is an exceptional idea. All right, so I wanted to hedge off our little property somehow, and I decided to create just that. And I had a little bit of inspiration for what I could use. I decided to grab some basically packing foam, that sort of squishy stuff that you get in blister packs and in your Warhammer carry cases. And I'm gonna use that as a foundation, like a sponge cake or a lamington. So I'm just gonna get some flock together and liberally coat it in PVA and then dunk, 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 and then push it on firmly. And then hopefully this will create something very hedgy. It actually looks spectacular. I am so happy with this idea. And I think just a, a little spray of blue purple underneath and it'll match the rest of everything else. Okay, now that I cut out all the windows and doors, all one of each of them, out of the front of our house, it was time to build the rest of it and give it a bit more detail in life. So I went around and made it a door frame just to sharpen up the edges, uh, cut out a door, and also make the beginnings of the floor that sort of leads into the house. It's just going to be a fairly small effect. It's not going to be a full room, but uh, I just want to give the effect of floorboards leading inside. This will also give somewhere to place one of the Pokemon. And while the house itself will not really have any depth, I do need to make the sides just a little bit. Uh, they'll sort of hang off the edge and they will obscure the light, which I'm going to have glowing from inside. As a last minute thing, we also decided to extend the diorama back a bit just to match with the edge of the wall. This meant that the cabin would sit inset to the actual diorama itself rather than on top, right? Yeah, and it would also give the tree somewhere to sit adjacent to the house rather than sort of sitting in front of it a bit. Now, one thing that we've learned from our time using balsa wood is that it doesn't really need priming. You can just use weathering and pigments and contrast paint on it and you'll give it some lovely life. With this particular project, I feel like we went with darker colours and worked our way up. We really wanted it to be a moody piece, so I love the colours you've used on the little cabin facade. Yeah. I think you all knew that this whole thing was going to get covered in snow and it makes sense to go the opposite direction and make everything quite dark before you cover it in, well, pure white. Yeah, yeah, the snow really desaturates things, so you want that strength and vibrance underneath. All right, now we're getting into the part where it all comes together. I'm going to take the lovely purple landscape that Dave has given me and I'm going to start working on the pavers. I'm just going to go with different greys, building it up to fairly bright, but not too bright because, of course, white snow is going to go on it. And just give the ground itself just a bit of a spritz with brown and a bit of green because that will help with the effect of grass underneath. All right, we're up to one of the most satisfying parts of this project, I think, and that's actually putting down all the colorful grasses that we have. Yay, I can't believe how cute this looks, this little cottage with all these flowers. It's adorable and we're pretty much done, right? Yeah, even without the intention of putting snow on it, this looks pretty cute. Wait, we're putting snow on it? Oh yeah. So uh, Jen and Murray have made a really cute little cavern. I'm loving it so far, but uh, they're not in today and I wanted to add just one more little something. I picture this gorgeous cottage and on the front of it, I can sort of see a planter pot. You know, the kind of garden beds that hang out the front and off a windowsill. So I'm gonna make a little planter pot, a little space where maybe some lovely grandma would put a little Pokemon pie, something like that anyway. Well, I couldn't let Murray and Jen have all the fun with Gamers Grass Tufts. I am a big fan of them and their laser cut plants and I wanted to make a little showcase piece given that they'd sponsored this video. <laughs> I often see these uh, lovely hanging garden beds on the windowsills of old sort of cottages and I thought it was super appropriate here. So I really roughly glued one together using a single piece of foam core as the base to give 
given structure and then just some wood sticks around the outside. Now with this super simple setup, all I needed to do was put some sterling mud over the top to give just that dirt look. I didn't even need to paint this as I knew there'd be snow and lots of plants. Uh, I also chucked some contrast paint on the wood and you can see here how effective that single coat of contrast is in making real wood, well, look like real wood. Uh, after that was done, I just grabbed a beautiful selection of plants, making sure to alternate between complementary colored flowers as well as some laser cut plants. This looks absolutely crazy and adorable and I'm so glad we're working on a project that's just full of all warm fuzzy feelings. So one touch that we definitely need to have for this house towards the end is some icicles hanging from the roof. So I'm going to use a trick that I've seen online but haven't done for myself yet. And that's to use a very gentle candle to basically slightly melt just to the point of pulling apart some bits of plastic. I'm using a flying stand here and that'll just sort of pull apart and create a slope which I can cut apart into an icicle. Many a Tau drone got sacrificed for this project. For the greater good, one might say. It's, it's not Christmassy enough. We need to make more Christmas. Murray, what did you do? I decided that the door was a bit bare. I decided it was a bit bare. Everyone else said it was a bit bare. So I had to think of something. And what do you put on a door? You put on a wreath. I decided that gamers grass tufts could make a pretty good wreath. So I just got a little bit of wire and just super good and pinched on some tufts and it works it just works and just a couple of little uh, red beads on it and sort of creates a bit more interest in it proceed to bring the pokemon diorama oh. to the snow vicinity here's the thing here's what we got we got cheap snow spray snow powder another version of snow spray and then we got pva water and then we got woodland scenic snowflake snow it's beginning to look a lot like christmas also icicles which is what we're putting on now not gonna lie this uh powdered snow kind of looks a lot like powdered icing sugar I've got to say, what are you talking about? This looks like Christmas. I can't see any uncles with beer. There's no backyard cricket. It's not 35 degrees Celsius. This looks like something, I don't know, out of a TV show. It's true. There's no barbecue here. And where's the kangaroos? <laughs> All right, guys, I'm out. I'm done with this recording. I I'm... I'm just so offended by this non-Australian Christmas. <laughs> Culture shock is real. All right, so now that we've gotten everything more or less done, just a couple of final touches. I wanted to brush just a little bit of snow off the flowers to bring back a bit of color and also to sweep some of the snow that went inside the door. We can have a little bit in there, but I don't think that the outside should be going inside. And it was time to start assembling our diorama and putting everything back in its place. Then we can show you the final reveals. As with all our videos, it is thanks to our amazing patrons that we're able to embark on a journey that leads to two videos a week and, well, really kind of crazy concepts and fun things <laughs> like this at Christmas. Uh, and an extra special thank you to our newest patrons, Garrett P, Adam Wood, John O'Clark, and Captain Fry24. Thank you guys so much for all your support. It really does mean the world to us. Yes, it is your patronage that is a gift to us, and in return, these videos are our gift to you. And thank you so much to Gamers Grass for sponsoring this video. You've been a huge supporter of the channel all year, and we really do love your products. They're absolutely fantastic, and encourage everyone to go out and add them to your hobby repertoire, because they truly are 
the best in market. They're just the best. This is the this is the top Christmas calendar. This Merry Christmas, Murray. You look so festive. I am very festive. Did you enjoy? I'm getting the Ghost of Christmas something vibes. Yeah. I, I can't deal with <laughs> this. This, <laughs> this appears. There's, there's something. What is, what is the omen? Exactly. I am both Santa and the tree. <laughs> and if you don't celebrate Christmas, happy holidays. We will see you next year. But if you're not, if you can't get a holiday either, we at least hope you enjoyed this non-denominational video of a winter scene it, and Pokemon. It wasn't, it was Christmas themed, but we celebrate Christmas, so that's okay. Do we? I do, do you? It's Christmas? I mean, I was get put the, put the presents around the Murray. I was it's told this was a gardening celebration. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's sponsored by Gamers Grass! My life is a lie! Oh, oh, did you think you were a garden gnome? Uh, explains the hat. <laughs>